everybody. Welcome to another Epi Quack Tuts. Today, we're going to be doing some Reese bases. We're going to make one from scratch and serum. Then I'm going to go through all the post-processing, some real post-processing. We're going to be doing some crazy EQ modulation. Pretty cool. But uh, let's get right, let's just get right into it here. So first thing, I got this uh, initialized uh, serum patch. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of put some like MIDI um, pattern together real quick. That sounds good. We'll just, we'll just leave it like that. All right, so let's get into actually making the Reese bass. So what is a Reese bass? So pretty much it's just like traditionally, it's just like two salt waves, two salt tooth waves clashing together, totally detuned, just creating a really chaotic sound. So, I mean, <clears throat> you can do salt waves, but you can also do whatever you want. Square waves, whatever sounds cool. So we'll start with a couple salt waves, but then, you know, we'll, we'll experiment here and try to get something else. Go right there, boom, boom. Bring the octave down two for both of these. All right. Make sure this portamento is up. All right, cool. So we got a little something going on here already. So let's, uh, <clears throat> let's bring in some detune and some extra voices here. Give it some width. Give it some, give it some loving over here. Actually, so this is only down one octave. So what I just did was I just change the fine tune a bit, just give it some more detune. It also is like gives it some more movement too, which is cool. Alright, so we'll give it some distortion. Definitely want to go with a real gritty distortion type like diode one or diode two. You can already hear that movement we're given by modulating the drive for this distortion. When we layer some EQ modulation onto that, it's gonna sound sick. So we got that, this sounds pretty cool. Throw on this multiband. So obviously, once you introduce this multiband <coughs> compressor, the highs are gonna go completely crazy and sound like shit. So we just we're gonna use this EQ, this EQ here, just to cut them off a bit. Around eleven thousand hertz seems to be a good a good spot for that. Seems a good balance. So that's we'll just leave it right there. All right then. So let's go back to our oscillation, to our you know main window over here, and uh, let's see what we can do here. Maybe change up the wave table position. See what other sounds we can get. That side wave sounds pretty sick. Alright, so let's go to some... Uh, Filters over here. Go with my favorite first, the comb filter.
See what I did with this notch right here. Listen to just to be to the uh, beginning of the sound. Oh, you hear that notch moving up the frequency range, <clears throat> just giving it that real neuro nasty sound, which we're accomplishing, like I said, using this notch right here. Just bringing out some frequencies, and then we're just modulating that using the envelope. Oh yeah! Now we got ourselves a really nasty re-space already. And it's an extremely simple sound. You just got two saw waves, comb filter, and a tiny bit of EQ modulation and distortion. That's really it. So, I mean... I mean, it sounds pretty nasty already. So, uh, let's, uh, let's see what else we can do here. We could try modulating the sustain with the... Uh, we could do it in the... We'll try with an LFO first, then we'll do it with the macro. So like I said, we're just modulating this sustain right here, using this LFO, just giving us the ability to um, automate this, or modulate the speed of this, uh, this notch that's moving up and down the frequency range. So instead of adding another LFO onto this frequency knob, just make it easier on yourself and modulate the sustain of the envelope that's already modulating it, you know what I mean? So it's just a shortcut of doing that, a lot easier and it sounds cooler. I'll do some noise. Thought that said noisy for a second. I was gonna say. <laughs> I was going to say that's pretty meant to be. <laughs> I mean, we could try something really crazy here and automate the pitch of this. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but, you know. <laughs> nah, it was worth the shot. We're just gonna go back to alpha. Bring that back up to 50. We'll just use the uh, the default noise. So one more thing I do want to kind of do is throw in another filter over here. Try, see what the reverb filter can give us. Because you can always get something cool with this reverb filter.
yeah, I'm not <clears throat> not really feeling the reverb filters. Let's try uh, something else here. That is some things to this uh, low pass we have up here that we use just to clean up the high end a bit. I added some modulation using this macro, so just check this out. So it's just one more thing you can modulate, but also I modulated the Q so as the so as this low pass sweeps down the frequency range, the Q is also gonna expand. So if, if I had the Q too high while it was up here in this higher frequency range, we would just be boosting those highs pretty much that we're trying to get rid of. It don't sound like shit. It don't sound way too harsh. But when the when the when the when the low pass is closing, we want to raise that Q because it gives us that real cool vowel like EQ modulation sound. So pretty much just picture it like this. You got your regular low pass, the Q is right in the middle, but then as it comes down, it's raising like this. Which is giving you a really nasty sound. See if we had it too high up here. We're just bringing all that harshness right back in that we just got rid of. So that's what I, that's why I did that. Just another thing you can do to really shape the sound. And the macro is just going to do it all in one shot. So that's that. Alright, let's do some actual mod EQ modulation here. I guess first thing we'll do here, I want to modulate that second macro. Have some ideas, you know what I'm talking about over here. Some things that I think will sound pretty good. Alright, we've got macro 2, which is that uh, low pass uh, filter that we're modulating. So I want to just kind of close and then open up real quick at, towards the beginning of the sound. That sound pretty cool. Maybe not have this at 100%, maybe like... And since we got that um, really harsh transient in the beginning there, I don't really want that. So instead of messing with this EQ, we'll just increase the envelope, the uh, attack, I mean. Perfect. Cause I don't want that like kick like sound there right in the beginning of the sound. It just doesn't sound. It doesn't sound good. Maybe we can even add another note here. I think that. Oh yeah. That sounds nasty. So just kind of adding in this uh, pitch drop right here at the beginning just really enhances that uh, that low pass filter opening up real quick. Just sounds fucking sick. Oh yeah, real nasty going on here. Maybe make this a little bit longer here just so we can have that nice low note ring out. Oh 
Oh yeah, sounds pretty nasty. Uh, what else? See, we had that uh, first macro that was modulating the speed of the sustain of this envelope, and this envelope was modulating this. Uh, or what was it doing again? This notch. That's what we're doing here. All right, so we can just mess with the speed of that. Add another automation lane right here. And we'll go into macro 2 on the serum, or macro 1, excuse me. Alright then. That's it right there. We'll have that, that sound. I think that sounds the best. I think we should switch this LFO shape up a bit just because it's too like obvious of what it's doing. I don't want it to be so like harsh. So maybe, maybe just have a normal triangle. Yeah, it sounds a lot better. Cause you can hear the LFO like restarting like real harshly when you have it as like this normal ramp up kind of shape. So it sounds better like this, the triangle triangle shape. I like that. That sounds good. Alright, so what do we have here? Oh yeah. Alright, so we're gonna do something like that. That'll sound pretty cool. Just gonna have to kind of experiment here and find that sweet spot. Hit this little plus button if you're on Logic, another EQ or whatever the fuck it's called, Automation Lean. That's gonna be. It's gonna be our second band right there. Frequency, and we're probably gonna have to modulate that uh, Q too. Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> I don't want it starting too high because it kind of just takes away from the impact of that real nasty like pitch drop we have going on. So just a little bit will be will be pretty good. I think that sounds pretty nasty right there. That sounds good. And then we'll have we're gonna have to modulate that Q. Just so when it's not moving, I don't want this Q to this peak to be like super high, especially in that low end. So right here, about this area, we'll just have it go right back down. Do about right there. <laughs> That sounds pretty good. And we're gonna add some more compression, which will take care of all this fucking crazy dynamics going on. But alright, we got some pretty simple automation going on here. Just, just add some to it. Here. 
Actually, it wouldn't make sense really to put this uh, high pass at that same spot because we got the low pass closing, and it's not gonna be good. So we'll get rid of that. What we're gonna add instead is a little notch here. Let's see what that does. Or maybe we should add a little peak instead. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Add another automation lane. This is number band number three now. Right. Put it like right here. That's another thing I did, added is give him a little bit more movement with this LFO tool. Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add another um, EQ over here. But we're gonna turn turn it on yeah, left and right. So we're going to have two different modulations going on the left and the right channel. So if you listen to this thing on headphones, it's going to sound totally mental. Which I'm sure Noisy does shit like this because their sounds are just unreal. So say, so for instance, we'll have this little notch here just on the left channel. And this one will be just right. Then we'll, we'll automate this. So now we'll modulate this one over here. You can already hear how nasty that shit sounds. Oh, yeah. Alright, then. Then we'll do this one, the right side. Band number two. And it'll do the same kind of motion, just in the opposite direction. Have it go down to like there maybe, and then, boom. 
One thing I'm not too much of a fan of is that low pass that comes in. I think that's macro two. Yeah. I'm just gonna get rid of that. <laughs> So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Now, what I would do is kind of just bounce this out, bounce it to audio, and then just chop up the coolest part, which I think is just this beginning. Like, that part right there just sounds fucking disgusting. I would just chop that out right there, throw it in a drop somewhere, and how you doing, how you doing, you're good to go. Alright, so then we'll just clean it up a bit. Then I'll check this one. So that's about it, I guess. Pretty much touched on everything, I think. Uh, there's some more stuff you could do to, like, gain stage it better, mix it a little bit better so it'll fit, fit better in a mix. There's some parts that are clipping still, but this is more just the sound design aspect, but... Anyway, thank you for watching, especially if you stuck around for the entirety of this video, that's, that's awesome, I hope you learned some good shit, but, like I said, thanks for watching, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.